Uh, so now he's like, I'm calling the police. And I see him dial the number. I'm sitting in the car. I could just get out, but still, he's going to see where I live. So I'm like, oh, like, what, what do I really do? <laughs> so I talked about the guy who met us at the airport, um, a person from the school. You know, we always were told to call him if anything happens. So I feel bad for calling him. It's very late, but, you know, I had to do what I had to do. So he comes out. Um, he's out on the corner in the middle of Shanghai, in the middle of, you know, middle of the, of the night, arguing with the taxi driver and the police in much more Chinese than I could understand, literally arguing. At the end of the argument, they give me the money back with they swore with counterfeit <laughs> 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 and tell me to have a nice night. <laughs> 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 so like, this is when your this is when your now wife was visiting, right? She was she she witnessed it all right there with me. Was this her first time <laughs> visiting, or was this after uh, her first time? Yeah, no, first time. So what was she thinking? Like, was she <laughs> like what was she thinking? Because <laughs> she doesn't know Chinese, right? She doesn't know Chinese at all. <laughs> yeah. So what is what's the, I what? Mean, is she I mean, I, I, you want to hear what she? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I I don't know what she was thinking. Honestly, I mean, you know, are we going to jail? Are we going to be locked up abroad? You <laughs> know, <laughs> can I get a phone call? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, 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 <laughs> it it was literally a locked up abroad moment. <laughs> it was a light of a ball moment. I mean, if I didn't have my guy, I don't know what would have happened. And, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Going so why shouldn't China, someone go to China? Why should there is no reason why you should not go to China. There is no reason. Um, if there was any reason, I would say you are in any type of condition that does not allow you to walk very much. That is the only Oh, you got to walk a lot in China. China. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're a very capable, you know, wheelchair-bound person, you know, we they have vans. You know, we can get you where you need to be. You just got to be comfortable with, you know, getting around where you go. Um now, something like the Great Wall would be a definite challenge if if you are in the wheelchair. Um, you know, to get halfway up to the Great Wall, you have to take a ski lift. Um, and then to get the rest of the way up, you literally have to walk up a mountain, like in thousand-year-old steps. So, you know, take that for what it is. <laughs> All right, now, um, you ended up eventually living in China, right? I lived there for one year. Uh, okay, so you lived there for... Mm -hmm. You lived there for one year, and was it was it your choice? Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know you say you were there for two semesters, but two semesters isn't one year. Did you have a choice? to stay longer than you were supposed to be there, or were you supposed to stay there for that whole year? I stayed, uh, when did I leave? So from August to the next July. So if you don't want to call it 12 months, it was 11 months. Um, but I did finish my contract. Um, I went before the first semester just to acclimate myself to living in China. And then I stayed a little bit after the second semester um, because I had some family come to visit, and then we traveled around China before I ended up coming home. Um, but as far as the decision to come home, uh, yes, it was my decision. Um, I could have signed on for additional time in China with that school or any other school or any job that I would have found on my own in China. Um so, yeah, it was my decision to come home. And you're fluent in Chinese now? Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Okay, so I want to go back to what you're doing now, because a lot of times we make decisions, all of us, and I believe if I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that when we're in school, we switch majors on average three times. So are you doing now exactly what you went to China for? Am I doing now exactly what I went to China for? Uh, technically, well, yes. Yes and no. Um, yes, because... How does I China, still, how does going to China uh-huh. make, like, how does going to China actually, what is go, your experience all those times going to China have to do with what you're currently doing now. When we go to TyreePowell.com, how much of your China experience is because of that? Well, first of all, the logo on the website is my name in Chinese. Um, A lot of my just thoughts about hmm, everything that has happened or that you will see on that website has come into my life as a result of how my life has changed after being being in China. Um, everything you'll see on my resume pretty much, um, the different businesses that you'll see links to off of my website, um, my, my, I mean, just, just me in general. Uh, I would say China definitely changed the trajectory of of my life okay so how big is you just talked about you have a lot of stuff from china on your resume um i think this is also big for uh, especially our young people that are listening to this and the parents of young people who are about to start positioning themselves to go to college they have children that's about to go to college like is um I remember when we were growing up, right, everybody was like, there was a, there was like this area, there was this time period where it was like, yo, you need to go, if you go to school for computers, you're guaranteed a job and you're guaranteed a good job. There was like that whole phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I'm asking that question because I want to hear from you, like I can only assume, but I would rather hear from you like. When you have China and stuff like, hey, I went to China for this amount of time, I'm fluent in Chinese, does that really stand out big with gaining new clients and getting new job opportunities? Just that experience that you had in China, does that separate you from everybody else where it's like, if I don't have somebody that went to China, they're skilled, they have the same skill set, but this person did this. Is that does that really play a major part on your resume as far as your work and jobs and stuff? Yes. How yes. so? Um, even so, uh, since my first time in China, uh, so far, I have had only one job that was directly doing something else with with China. So obviously, having China on my resume would, you know, help me get another job that is going to send me to China again. Um, So that's the easy answer. Um, And that answer was uh, helping to start two study abroad programs uh, with Johns Hopkins University. Uh, So they hired me specifically because I was still young. I was working at a college while I was there. I will be working at their undergraduate, you know, Johns Hopkins undergraduate campus in Baltimore, um, and marketing and recruiting for two brand new study abroad programs that they were offering to China. Uh, so, you know, me having that recent experience was a direct, you know, uh, aid in me getting that job and, and helping those programs do well. Um, in other positions that had nothing to do with China, uh, because I am a web developer, I'm an IT project manager, 
um, those physicians had nothing to do with Chinese, had nothing to do with going to China or talking to Chinese people or anything. Um, but just it being on my resume would, I guess, make me stand out, you know, make me get me to the top of the list um, for just soft skills that you would attain by living in a foreign country and working with people who don't speak your language primarily. And, you know, just having the ambition just to, you know, do something majorly different and excel at it. So if you can do something that seems seemingly hard, then why can't you do something that, you know, you have to be have a slighter edge and somebody who doesn't have that. So that's that's my point. Okay, and you're an entrepreneur, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so what what did you learn in the entrepreneurial world in China that is completely different than how it is here in the States? Like what did you pick up in China that has to do with your entrepreneurship that is that you did not learn here? Bargaining. Bargaining and Bargaining? not always, yes, do not always accept the first price. All right, pay give us an example. The, pay the price that you want to pay or, or you know, as close as possible. Um, but don't always just take it for granted that the person uh, in, in the sales position can't move the price. Um, so give us a bargaining right. tip or a bargaining, bargaining experience when, when, when that you, you learned up, in China. When you show up to any – now, not this is not happening in a department store. This is not happening at a Hilton. This is not happening in any Western situation in China or anywhere else in the world for that matter. But if you're at any, um, you know – street place or how can I describe it, um, you know, market situation that's, you know, not sanctioned by a Fortune 500 company. These are, you know, just other entrepreneurs. Um, let's say I wanted to buy some shoes. I wanted to buy some Jordans. Um, they may or may not have been fake. Um, but, you know, there was a price that was displayed in China that, you know, the way you do it is you automatically quote as the buyer 50% of that price off the top. The person is going to play a game. Oh, no, you know, this is crazy. You're trying to kill me. i got a family to feed. Uh, and, you know, and okay, well, 55. Or, you know, you know, <laughs> and, you, and you inch it up. They try to tell you $5 less than the original. Well, you tell them $5 more than what you said. Um, so you play the game along with them. Um, as an American, you know, maybe it's just me, I was pretty uncomfortable with, with this bargaining and just having to have to do it if I knew you were eventually going to give me it at a lower price. Um, so it was just like, why do we have to go through this game? You know, just give it to me cheap. You know, I can go somewhere else and get somebody else. Um, but then I eventually, so that that was kind of my first hard lesson. Um, you know, having to knowing that I was going to live there, knowing that this is the culture here, and if I wanted to not pay ridiculous amounts of money for things, I had to go along with the culture. Um, so when I decided to really focus on learning the language, bargaining then became fun because then it allowed me to practice the language. Okay, so bargaining is big in China. Yes, very big. Okay. So what was your, because you said you had to learn this when you got there. So what was, did, did you have, what was your greatest bargaining experience in China? Do you have one? It may not be a big one, but like what was something significant where you was like, oh, shoot. Okay, I just, I did that. I just bargained that. Um. Greatest one I would say is uh this again happened when uh my wife was there. Um, she came during Christmas New Year's time. Uh we decided to go to a warm place in China, which was an island, um, you know, south of Hong Kong. Uh 